Hello everyone, Crazy P here. Doing a little something different today. No games. Instead, today we are working on a watch. <laughs> uh, this one here belongs to my brother-in-law. And he uh, definitely puts it through its paces. This is a Casio G-Shock GW9400-3. The GW signifying that it is solar and atomic, 9400 being the model, and 3 meaning green. But a uh, little, little use and abuse on there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a pretty big, uh, pretty big chunk missing right there in the, uh, in the glass. They call it glass, not a crystal for some reason. But uh, so we're going to go ahead and take this apart. I'm going to try to keep everything on camera best I can. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, I'm just going to take off the band. Makes things a lot easier to get to. And these actually, these connect with screws instead of a spring bar, which I kind of like. Uh, if you don't know what a spring bar looks like, There you go. That's a spring bar. The ends shoot in and out. Pretty fun. Well, this is something a little different for me. I've not really done too much experience with this. I can't even see my screen right now, so I don't even know what the shot looks like, but hopefully you guys are able to see what I am doing. Lights up and everything. Look at that. Pretty cool watch. I've got uh, I've got one myself. Uh, so now we're going to start taking apart the back. We've got these four screws here, which will remove the case back. And then after that, we can pull out the module. Uh, we might have to take off the buttons. Probably the bezel too. But uh, we will get there when we get there. So we're just going to keep going along here. Oh, I did this. I just did this a little different order than I usually do. That is okay. Now this is the first time this watch has been open, so everything should look just fine inside. Go and pull that back off. Oh, there we go. I was just not grabbing in the right spot. So on the inside here, we've got. The gasket, that looks in good shape. I'll put some silicone grease on that before I put it back together. Here's the case back. Now hopefully, hopefully we can get a good shot of that. Uh, try to catch some light there. Got this little uh, logo for the range man. It's uh, an electric cat wearing a compass on their arm. This watch does have a, comp a compass in it. Um, compass, altimeter, barometer. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, on the inside here, we've got our speaker. I believe this one is for something else. <laughs> I actually don't know off the top of my head. Uh, let's grab these tweezers back out. Just got the rubber cushion on the back here. And it's kind of snagged down in place by these four guys there. A little bit of dirt build up in here, but that is completely normal. Uh, so the next step here before we go any further is we have to remove this ribbon. Uh, this ribbon connects the sensor to the watch. And I believe that one is for the barometric pressure. Actually, I'll show you guys here real quick. Really closely, you can see there's a little flat ribbon there. Connects into the module and then that's connected to the sensor on the side of the watch there. So basically all we have to do, kind of grip it, there we go, so as you can see I've got, uh, got that ribbon detached, so now we're going to pull out the module and I usually like to grab this, uh, this little bar attached there, actually 
That's how little pressure you need. Oh. Flat ribbons. Uh, oh, there we go. So there's the module removed, and this is probably going to sit. Yep. Uh, if you can see that on the top line, I can't see my screen, so I can't confirm. But at the top, it says open. There is a... Uh, that's what that's for. <laughs> that's literally to let you know that the watch is open, uh, as far as I know. So we're not going to do anything with the module here. These springs connect to the solar panel in the front, and that is where you get your solar power from. These are the charging springs that charge up the rechargeable battery located under here. We don't need to take that out. So we're just going to set this aside for now. I'm going to put it under a dust cover. Not that I fully need to, but it never hurts. So rubber cushion, case back. I'm going to also clean this up a little bit too, uh, to make it look nice and fresh. Uh, I've got a little nylon brush, kind of clean this all up. Don't worry, uh, I'm not judging you for a dirty watch. I've had watches look like this too. Uh, this just happens from normal wear. Obviously nothing's on the inside, but we're not going to be too concerned with that for now. Hmm, next I want to take off. I want to leave that for last. So now we get to do the fun part. We're going to be removing some, uh, what do you want to call them? E clips, E rings. I don't know if you guys can fully see these, but there's one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one there. <laughs> so we got a few of them. Uh, basically, button, 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 and the front light button. So I'm going to take all those out. I need to get this bezel off. This piece is called the bezel here, this green part. Take this off so that the glass has nothing uh, blocking it from the outside. Also on the inside, I'm going to have to take off that right now, I guess. This is, uh, some consider this the dial in these watches. Uh, I've got the battery levels right in the middle there. And then this is kind of a little multi-purpose ring that you use for different stuff. Uh, so again, we will set that aside for now. Uh, actually, you know what? We might be able to, we might be able to cheat here. Let me, uh, just double check real quick. Um, actually, no, I do have to take this out still. Uh, this is the, this is the glass here that I'm putting on. This is the backside, obviously. So this does not have a solar panel attached to it. That's a separate piece on the inside here. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, now there's many schools of thought here on how to remove these clips. Personally, I like to, where is it? Where, where, where is it? I've got some silicone grease somewhere and I really would like to use that for this. Let me just look. I've got stuff kind of everywhere. Oh, there it is. It's literally right there. It's got the good old silicone grease here. Oh, that is actually all over the sides. I thought that was empty. Uh, so I just like to put just a little spot on this, of this, on these. Oh, how is that button all attached? Okay. Uh, this just helps the button stick to the watch instead of flying across the room. Nothing major. Literally, just a, just a little spot of grease just to hold it down. Something I've been wanting to cover on video for a while now. Some people really don't know the secret. Or this, it's not really a secret, it's just a tip. But, uh, you know, I've done a few of these. I'm definitely not the number one expert on this matter, but I've definitely done more than my fair share with the custom work I do. Okay, so we got a little bit of grease on all those. I'm also going to have to grab some pliers. But for the most part, I take a... Let me wipe that off. We got this little fork tool here. You can see that. Uh, pointy, dip, pointy. So basically it's like a flathead screwdriver with a notch cut out of it. 
And that actually lines up really well with these clips. So generally, you can kind of just push these off without having to you know, grip them with pliers. I still might have to get pliers though. So there's one off. Oh, that one actually almost went flying on me. So this is all my tweezers. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but a uh, little tiny clip. And then uh, there's the button. We got to sneeze. So on this button we've got, there's a spring, I don't know if you can see me moving that, and then there's a, a couple little o-rings on there, and that just helps seal out water. We'll put some silicone grease on those too before we close everything back up. And I'm just going to repeat this process uh, five more times. Uh, this part might be edited out just for uh, the sake of time. But I actually kind of do want to do this in one continuous shot because I think that'd be kind of cool. We'll see. Which way are you facing, Clip? There we go, there's three. And then, uh, for the most part, these side buttons are all the same. So, mix and match. Uh, put, them, put them where they go. There's no put A to A, B to B with these. Sometimes Casio will make the, uh, the adjust button, which is usually on the top left. Sometimes they'll make that one a little bit shorter, but on this watch... Looks like those are all the same. And it's not like a slight difference either. It's a usually a pretty big chunk. There we go. Four for four. Same with these clips. Those are all going to be the same size. So it doesn't really matter where those go. Do I want to clean up these buttons at all? I don't know if I can. I'll give them a wipe down later. We'll get there. We've got a bit of work to do. Just for the sake, we're going to speed this up and grab a second piece just to push this down a little bit easier. Sorry, none of you guys can see what I'm doing here. There we go. So this is one of the unique buttons. As you can see, this one's a little bit larger than, uh, than the others. <laughs> Can't really mix those up that much. Uh, I think this piece comes out. Oh yeah, this one has a, oh boy. Let me get this out and then I'll show you. Oh wow. <laughs> I hope you guys heard that. Uh, that is disconnected, right? Come on. There we go. So, <laughs> this, uh, that's what connected that one. This goes around the side button. This is how you access your compass and stuff. You can see that. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, is that a gasket out there? No, I think that's just color. That's just color decoration. Um, but yeah, this was the E clip for that one. That's a little bit larger, as you can see. Uh, and last button. Go back to our fork tool here. This is the light button. And that easy. Push that button out. Again, this is another unique button. Still with the spring in O-ring gaskets. We'll get all those cleaned up. Uh, I think I'm just going to do that off camera. I probably just might t toss it in an ultrasonic, uh, use a brush or something to clean it up. Okay. Now these can all come out. These were inside the watch. Uh, the post for the buttons would go through and then the E clip or E ring, whatever you want to call it. And these are kind of just fit in there. Maybe a little bit of an adhesive, but they seem to be pulling right out, so I might just put a little grease on them just to hold them back in place. Oh, yeah, that one looks like it had a glue square on it. Not a big deal. I actually do have some of those little tape strips. This might seem like an excessive thing to do to uh, pull out uh, pull out some glass, but uh, this is kind of how these are constructed. Uh, these definitely are not just slap them together and uh, you're wearing a watch. I mean, for what you pay for one of these, you uh, you definitely get your money's worth. Okay, so I'm seeing that these all have these black spots in here, but I think it's actually part of the case. So, we do have to get that sensor out too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. Sensor cover. That fits right underneath here. As you can see, there's kind of a opening there. This just goes on there. That's just a piece of black plastic. We'll get that cleaned up too. There's this. These are not actually screws. They call them screws because they have screw heads like a Phillips. But, uh, if you can, I don't know if I can really get a good angle on these, but they're literally just studs just shoved in there. They're just kind of clicked into place. They're decorative. They don't really do anything. Uh, they make black studs too if you want to get those switched out for a little bit more stealth look and then you can put some paint in there. I'll do that in another video. So here we have the blank case. Looking a little dirty. Not a big deal. We're going to take out the sensor here. Oh, messed with my screwdriver for a second. <laughs> so get the two screws out. Little metal cover. We'll put these screws all here so we can kind of remember. There we go. There's your sensor. Literally just a little tiny thing. It's kind of cool. Hey folks, we are back. Uh, sorry about that. My camera cut off mid-recording of the last part before I got the new crystal glass on. Uh, once again, the, the screen for the camera is above where I can see, so I did not realize that it stopped recording. Uh, pretty much all you missed was me getting this, the old crystal out, glass, getting the old glass out, getting this one in, cleaned up this case real nice if you couldn't see that already. Got that nice and good. Nice and well. Got the little metal, I don't even know what those are called, uh, but these metal pieces, I got those back in there. There's a little bristle in there. So you got those back in already. Glass back on. Cleaned up all of these buttons. And what I really appreciate about the Range Man is that instead of one gasket, or o-ring there's actually two here there's a gray one and then this black one there and I guess that's just to help 
keep it sealed up, make sure water doesn't get in through the buttons, also keeps out the dust and dirt. Really handy, really handy feature there. We got all those parts cleaned up. Oh, look at that thing's freaking spotless. So we are going to start reassembling a watch. I think we're going to start here with the bezel. Got that cleaned up best I could. I see that there's some paint specs on there. I mean, that happens. You know, if you're wearing this watch every day, everywhere, stuff's going to happen to it. Got all the dust and dirt cleaned out of inside of here. Again, that just happens because this doesn't have a seal sealing it from the outside. Stuff's going to build up in here. That's fine. Uh, where you're watching the shower, that kind of helps keep, keep that down to a minimum. So simple enough. Oh, actually, hoo -hoo, guess who almost forgot the important part? The sensor. Sensor's going to go in this way. I didn't bother really cleaning this up too much because I didn't want to mess with that one. Um, sensor, oop, oh, that came off. The sensor with the ribbon facing that way. That doesn't want to come off now. Yeah, but it's a little sticky. Now I'm going to wipe this off. Real quick, off camera. Sorry, I just don't feel like moving my camera. Nor moving my wiping cloth. Promise you I'm not using a t-shirt or anything. What I hate about wiping off crystals, uh, or in this instance glass, is I can never tell if the smudge is on the inside or if it's on the outside at a quick glance. And yes, I actually am using a nice little wiper, wiper doodle, uh, not just a t-shirt or anything. That guy back in there. Hopefully that one stays down this time. Once we get the buttons on, it's not an issue. So we get the sensor in place there. Now we can reattach the cover of the sensor. Again, this, this is another part I didn't really clean. Um, I didn't see an issue with that. Get the screws in. Screws I could have cleaned again, but uh, that's all right. Let's get this screwed into place and then uh, we will get the bezel on. Start putting the buttons back. Putting the buttons back, that's the fun part. And I really hope, I've got this one screwdriver I really like to use for putting them on. Uh, simply because it has a slight magnetism to it, which actually really helps holding these clips. Uh, if not, I can just use some more of that silicone grease I've got over here. So that is back on. We've got a little sensor cover. So to do this, we will put the screwdriver down. We don't need that. Tuck that piece right back in there. That's all that does. Take our case. I hope you guys can't really hear the kids too loud. Uh, sister and nephews are in, or nieces are in town. That's uh, while well, I'm working on this one, kind of on a time crunch here. Simple as that, bezel's back on. On other G-Shocks, uh, the bezel is actually held in place. This is the first one I found. The bezel's actually held on with screws. This is just a case, by the way, of uh, another project. Um, so I guess, well, technically, the screws that hold the band on also hold the bezel on, but otherwise, this is literally just sitting on here. Like I said, these flathead screws don't really do anything. They're just decoration. So there's our case. Let's start with the hardest button on the watch. Hardest button on most every G-Shock is going to be the, oh, what am I hitting? Oh my gosh, something just slid underneath my drawer. Let me get that out, please. There we go. Uh, the hardest button on most G-Shocks is going to be the light button, simply because instead of being flat and flush up and down vertically with the sides of the case, 
This one sits at an angle, so it's a little bit harder to get. Not impossible. Uh, I don't know if I've got my uh, Super Magic screwdriver handy. So this will be a little more fun. Not undoable though. Not undoable, not impossible. Let's start with, actually, you know, we'll start with the big boy. Now, I guess I don't fully know what the design or the purpose of this piece is. Uh, it could just be for design, just to kind of flush out the design element right there. Uh, so we get this guy with the big old massive clip. Oh, that one's, you know what, we're just going to take this one out until we actually get to that button. That's going to know the crap out of me if I keep doing that. So right now, if you can see, this will be the process for all six remaining uh, clips. Literally, you've got a post with a groove. That's where the clip goes. And basically all you do is you kind of just push it down. Everyone's got their own train of thought here. School of thought, school of process, processing options. Uh, simply what I do is I just line it up best I can. And then I put my screwdriver, instead of flush and flat with it, I angle it a little bit to cover a little more surface area. And then just snap it in. I'm sure you guys heard that. So as you can see now, that big giant massive clip is back in place. Uh, so this will now not, not come out anymore. So there's that. This is the button for the sensors. Before we put that on, we're actually going to grab a little bit of this tasty silicone grease. Like I said, there are some O-rings on there. Usually anywhere that there's some O-rings, you want to get some grease on there. Just to help seal it up a little bit better. Sorry I'm off camera there. So I don't know if you can fully see that, but I do have a little bit of silicone grease on there and we just kind of make sure it's on the o-rings i'm not going to take the time to actually take these off and get underneath it um i really don't see the need for this watch this particular case i'm off camera again uh so right there all i did little teeny see this is why i like silicone grease see that that's just stuck on my thumb now take that completely miss that is on there. That is what, uh, that's how when you push the button, I'm going to put this in the case now. Let's just put a little more grease just to make sure. That's a lot more grease. That's more than I need. Wipe my hand off. If anyone's been to my shop, you will notice that I have a good, good, good chunk of napkins stacked uh, near my workstation. And the reason is because I like to use silicone grease and I don't like to get grease where I don't need the grease. So, we've got that on there. Now all we're gonna do is just put that in or drop it. I'm trying to do this in a way that you guys can see it too. There we go, so that's in there, it's that spring. So that bumps out. Work that grease in there, just kind of spin it a few times. The buttons are actually holding up really well. They're not dinged up, they're not damaged. They look good. Now comes the fun part. This button, without the clip in place, uh, does not actually poke through that hole. But when I push the button it does, and then there's a little teeny notch. Let's see if I can actually point it out here for you. It's a little teeny notch right here, and that's where i got to get this clip. And just like before, I put a little grease on it just to kind of make sure I can hold it in place. I'm just going to show this process once or twice. And then uh, cut this part out because it's kind of boring. <laughs> uh, so we got our little clip right there. Line that up on the watch. And what I do is I, what I like to do is I push the button all the way in and then I, it's kind of hard on this button because there's no flat wall. 
What I'll do is I'll push it up against the flat wall with the button extended out. Let's restart here. Uh, and then let go of the button, and then that finds the notch for the clip. Start all over there. Okay. Oh. Took the clip with me. Do it again. Uh, this this step solely stops a lot of people from doing some G-Shack work because they just, uh, one reason or another, there we go. Now it's in place. So now that I'm not holding the button, you can see that that post is actually sticking out. Take that screwdriver again. Get a nice little push. That's in place. Uh, they don't look like they smushed out or anything. These are not misshapen at all. So I don't need to reclamp them down onto the button post. So that button is in place. And that's a, that's really, once you kind of learn some tips and tricks there, it's really not that hard to actually do some of this stuff. Uh, but those little clips, uh, either due to eyesight issues or just fear of losing a piece and your watch being incomplete, they will not do this work. And that's why they come to people like me. I've got no problem doing this stuff. I'll do it all day. So here we go again. We're going to take another button. Take the spring off. Take up a little bit of that saucy goodness. <laughs> I don't know why I called it that. If I actually, if I take my bottle... Flip it upside down. Try to get some of that grease to the top. Uh, instead of using my finger, it will be in the lid and around the inside of the tube there. So I can just take the button and stick it in the tube. Okay, trying to see what I'm doing again. Get a nice little bead of grease there. So it's nice and covered. And this also helps hold the spring in place. Wipe my fingers off again. So I take the spring. Spring on, now that spring's in place, it is held there with the grease. Go up on in there. Nice and smooth button, spin it around a bit, work it through. There we go. Same process again, we take uh, a little bit of grease, that's a bit much. Don't need that much, there we go. Go on the watch, grease the post. Now this is my way of doing this. Uh, I know some people remove these clips with the tweezers. So this is where this gets easy because now this is on a flat wall. I can let go of that clip is in place on the post in its notch. Ready for me to apply some pressure. Again, I like using a screwdriver. I don't know if you heard that click, but that's literally how easy that was. So that button is now in place. There's no way that button's coming out unless some freak accident happens where this gets grabbed by pliers and literally ripped out. Uh, you're going to have other issues then at that point. <laughs> no amount of proper clip insertion is going to get that fixed. Actually, no, I'm just going to keep this all in because this is really not that long of a process. Spring off. A little bit of grease on there. There's definitely no one set right or wrong way for doing all this. Oh, almost forgot the spring. So since we got that grease on there, we can literally just pick up the spring like that. Uh, there's no right or wrong way to do this, like I was saying. Uh, easier and tougher methods. Obviously, there's going to be completely wrong ways of, you know, like I said, ripping it out with pliers from the front, unless you want to buy new clips. Easily sourced, but then we'll start adding up very fast in price. A little, little bit of, ooh, ooh, hoo -hoo, look at that. Now we're just playing with her, playing with stuff. Get that grease on there. Grab one of these handy clips. I'm trying to do math in my head of, did I forget a clip somewhere? That's when it gets really fun. Clips there in the notch. Just like that. 
Uh, one, two, three. Nope, we got three clips, three buttons left to do. And then I still have to put this piece back on. So I will not forget that. Just like that. Oh my gosh. You guys are making me forget stuff here. Trying to jump ahead a little bit. Like I said, I'm just spinning that, working that around, making sure it gets on the walls. Get it pushed a few times. Should be its own series of video right here. I was actually wanting to do a video on the secrets of the clips and how to Less hassle. You know what, I still might, because I don't know if anyone's going to notice that this part's in this video. Uh, which is completely fine. Get that clip in place. Click in. Just like that. Alright. And this, this honestly, this is the hardest part of reassembling a watch. Uh, G-Shock. But once again, this actually goes to show you the kind of craftsmanship that goes into these things. I mean, this isn't just case, crystal, movement, spacer, case back, stem, band. Uh, obviously, these have clips in them. Other watches will have clips in them, clips buttons. So this watch, this watch is more than just your stem for setting the time. This is a digital watch. So there are buttons, pushers, and most watches will have the button pusher. A clip, a spring. Most will have gaskets or those little tiny O-rings. Not all do. Uh, that's just going to vary watch to watch. Good quality watches are definitely going to be sealed up better than El Cheapo. But, uh, you know, they watch for every flavor. That's uh, that's how they do them. I guess I just personally... I got turned on to the G-Shocks a couple years ago when I realized the kind of customization work that you can do with them. That's uh, one of the reasons I like them, and they are very durable. This is not my watch, so I won't do any demonstrations of durability today. But, uh, there's a little piece of gunk there left over from my cleaning. Oh, get that hair off of there. These things are built to last. Uh, I personally think that this watch would work just fine with the mark on the glass crystal. I still want to say crystal every time, but the calm glass on the uh, the part site. So I will refer to them as glass. Uh, just getting some more of that grease. Um, Backstory to this watch, I've been told that, uh, so, you know, some of that gunk, it was kind of gunky, which is completely normal, completely fine. Uh, these watches are meant to be used. They're not meant to be worn once for a photo op and then tossed into a box. Uh, wear these things. They're meant to be functional. And uh, that's what this one's been used for. So you can have marks, you can have that, you know, little paint splatter, which is completely fine. All replaceable parts for now. Never know when uh, parts are when Casio is going to decide to pull parts. Now we're on that light button I was telling you about. It's a little bit harder to line up, um, but I think I kind of just nailed this first try. So we got that one there, and then this one I'm going to use the flat side instead of the edge of the screwdriver. Okay, see so how that was easy. That was super easy. Uh, up next, we're going to grab that module back out after we put this dial back in. I'm going to wipe off my uh, tweezers here. I forgot what words were for a second. Just make sure I get all the gunky bits off. This guy here. Face of the watch is this way. Again, I apologize if any of this is off camera. Uh, and 
I, I also do apologize that I was not able to show some of the cleaning and getting the crystal out. Uh, getting the crystal out, literally, you just, it's not going to fall out. It's held in place with a gasket. Uh, not, not a rubber gasket like this guy here. Uh, hard plastic, friction fit. So literally it's just friction and you just got to get it out. Cleaning. I took the buttons, pulled the springs off, kept the O-rings on, the gaskets, those little O-rings. Kept the O-rings on. Little cup, hot water, some soap, toothbrush, bada boom. Not that those are really dirty. Just felt like cleaning them since the opportunity was there. Same with the case once everything was off of it and it was just plastic. Just nice toothbrush, hot water, soap. Same with the bezel. There was dirt on the inside. I don't know if I showed you guys that or not. Uh, there was some dirt on the inside of there. Just build up. Because this isn't this isn't sealed. There's no seal here. This is literally just pushed up. So you're out swimming in a river. You're out where it's dusty, dirty, you know, getting your hands dirty in some yard work. Dust and dirt will build up in here. That's just facts of life. Doesn't hurt anything, doesn't get inside the watch, so it's completely fine. Uh, now that we have the dial in place, I will grab the movement here. It's been sitting up in that, underneath that dust cover. There we go, still says open. Um, something I should point out is this is a solar powered watch. And people tend to think solar power and they think of those old calculators. Oh, they still make them. They're still present everywhere. This is solar powered, but it doesn't just simply power on and it's on. This actually, as I showed before, this has a battery in it. Uh, even though it is a rechargeable battery and you generally won't have to replace this. Solar power comes in, does its magic, goes through the pipes, does whatever it needs to do. Gets into this battery here. Just like those home rechargeable batteries that you would toss onto a charger or your phone. Those have batteries in them, charge them up. There you go. This is where the fun part begins. Every part of this is the fun part. So basically we're just gonna kind of wiggle this back in here. Make sure to get those clips. Actually, you know, we're gonna go on this side first because this side's got three. Now this is where it gets really tough. Um, we're gonna bend these flaps back a little bit. Just a little bit, these little prongs. Um, I think these mainly are just to hold down the rubber cushion. So, I mean, they're flimsy little pieces of metal. It's nothing that I'm going to break. So let me just get this ribbon back. Just holding it back with my finger. I wonder if there's people out there cringing watching this scene if I'm doing stuff wrong. <laughs> um... So we got this part of the way in. One of the flaps went underneath the metal tab that's actually used for powering the buttons, or hitting the buttons. Nice little love taps. Everything's in place there. Let me just make sure all my buttons align up. I don't know if you can see the top of my head or not. If you can, whatever. Welcome to the top of my head. So right now I'm just checking to ensure that all these buttons line up. Uh, if you look really closely, there's this little metal bar here. And when I push the button, that connects to a contact, completes a circuit, watch does its magic. So those all look in pretty good shape. Looks like they're in the right spots where they need to be. What is touching my leg? It's my microphone cord. I'm using a clip-on microphone. Um, so now we take this ribbon and just put it back in place. This again kind of deters some people. All right, and I'm back, sorry about that. Uh, I just checked the footage after I got it uploaded to my computer and realized that it cut off the last part again, again. So this is the third time I'm doing this part. <laughs> uh, not a big deal, uh, nothing, nothing harm here. Um, so we're just gonna get this closed up, we're gonna get buttoned up and we're all set to go. The last stuff that we need to do here is get this ribbon put back in its slot. And let's see if I can't get that right in front of you guys here. So you can see it. Line that up. Oh, no, that's over. 
a little bit more force than that. And this is a flexible ribbon. It was meant, it was designed to do this. There we go. Literally easy as that. And then before we actually put this back together, the uh, the rubber cushion, the gasket and the screws and the case back. Well, actually, we are going to use the case back. Uh, we're going to check a few things here. Okay, so this is the top. Uh, orientation does matter on here. The This spot here has to match up with those two springs. And then that piece there matches up with that, and that's how everything works. So I'm just going to take a look at this real quick. Alright, the altimeter, barometer, and compass all work. Let's go back to the home screen here, real quick. I just want to show you something. Uh, if you look closely, you can actually see the date up in the top, top uh, window there. But uh, if we let go of the case back, says open so that's actually what that does and then this you know just lets you know that the watch is open um, if uh, on the off chance that you weren't actually just taking it apart and maybe a screw some screws busted off or something for whatever crazy reason this will let you know that the back was open and hey don't get it wet or you're gonna be kind of screwed <laughs> uh, anyway here we go, we're going to put the rubber cushion back in here. Now I don't remember what I exactly covered topic wise while I was doing this in the last two, uh, two edits of this. But uh, right now we're just getting it closed up. These little metal tabs that are outside of the button post. Just like that. What I like about these watches is if you're putting something together wrong, the watch will let you know because it will not fit. Most of the time you can't just jam pieces. Uh, like if I were to flip this piece over, it wouldn't fit because it's got the slots designated for the springs in this uh, bar here. That flips up actually. It looks like it's a little bit low. There we go. Um, so when you put everything together, it fits and it goes together nicely and you are all set cool 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 stuff uh, the next step here is going to be putting the uh, gasket into this is some foam impregnated with silicone oil grease I don't know if you can say impregnated here or not but that's what it is there we go so that is nice and done uh, a few different ways to get this set up with the with the grease and then all we were doing was this uh, if you look closely you can see this groove running around the outside so we're just putting it back in there and the grease simply just helps it actually keep it sealed up real nice um, obviously this is going to fit really nicely against the case back but if there is little little tiny spots um, this will just help keep it sealed up so always put some grease on there especially dust dust is gonna be the big one but dust I guess and water those are the two big ones but this will keep everything out so there we go we've got that set up this piece is nice and cleaned here there is the outline of the gasket if you look closely on there I hope that shows up uh, I, I did mention that there was some dirt on here that I had to clean up that was all outside of the gasket line nothing was inside of it so the gasket is doing its job good to see that and then here I like to one of these tabs is sitting off a little bit hold on to make sure okay so what I like to do here, get this out of the way, I like to apply some nice pressure right in the middle 
and then I actually kind of do a little pattern here. Keep my pressure down because this this has been placed straight down onto that gasket. No sideways pressure. Um, this is a shaped gasket, and you don't want that getting bent out of bent out of shape there. So now that I have two down, this is securely on. We can move my finger. Kind of hurts a little bit if you're pressing down really hard on something for a chunk of time. <laughs> Oh, kind of missed that one there. So there we go. So I did uh, sort of like an X pattern here. I don't go around in a circle. I like going across. Uh, I feel that it just helps make sure that gasket's not getting press pressure forced on it out one way or the other. And then I'll go back and just make sure these are all really tight. Uh, something else you can also do is take a flathead screwdriver. Uh, there are slots in the screws. If you want to. And this is just free spinning. Cool. That actually just came apart. That's awesome. I'll fix that later. <laughs> All right. We're almost home here. Just going to put the band back on. Uh, and if you haven't noticed these aren't connected by spring bars if you remember me showing you that earlier this is a spring bar I do like these a lot it's just a little more force throughout the band whereas this one it's held in the middle and then all the stress point is literally right here on the tips of them and I mean this is literally just piece of metal tube with a spring in it so this is they're 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 pretty solid but uh, if you give them enough force they will rip uh, that could also just be a safety feature uh, if you get your arm snagged on something just let it rip off uh, <coughs> excuse me there are points that this will rip I feel before this but it just it just helps add to the solid construction uh, just don't get your arm caught on stuff And these go all the way through, just a nice solid bar. I really appreciate that. The construction, really good on these. Sorry if I'm getting a little loopy. Uh, like I said, this is my third time recording this. And uh, <laughs> family's in town. So there we go, this watch is all set up, all back together. Light works there. Uh, ultimate test. There we go. I forgot that I was using the built-in or the uh, clip-on microphone. Um, so one thing to note out here, the multiband six, the atomic that I said earlier, I pointed at it. I don't know. I didn't say multiband six. Uh, six towers across the world synced up to atomic clocks. They broadcast a signal. If you live in the States, your signal comes from Denver, I believe. And every night at midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., this watch is going to try to grab a signal. This one didn't grab it since yesterday. Uh, to be fair, it also was in a box in a sub-level floor. <laughs> um, but uh, you can also try to force a manual receive, just like that, and then it'll show some levels here. I, I don't even see the screen. And it should say like an L1 there, or L1, L2, or L3. Never mind, it says auto on. So you can set it to automatically receive signal. Or you can turn that off if you want. Oh, what the heck? I want to grab a signal real quick. There we go. This button. Bottom right. Hold to set, not hold to receive. So now it'll be saying that L1, L2, L3. Now it'll still show us the time somewhere here on the screen. Let me look. Hold 
Hold on, I guess I haven't actually looked at the, the range man screen in a while. Yep, okay. So yeah, there, it's, it said it there. Um, but yeah, it has the little receive signal in the corner there. But uh, everything does work on there. I think uh, my brother-in-law is going to be really happy to see this watch again. Definitely built to last. Pretty pretty fun watch. Uh, so that's it for the watch. A little something different for, for the channel. Uh, I did have some people request to make some watch videos. So I figured, why not? This is a, there's definitely a lot I can show you. Show you this, changing batteries on various watches, resizing bands, yeah, everything. Uh, this, I mean, this is just a little insight into the work that myself and countless others do all over the world. And if this is something that you're interested in learning more about, uh, contact me. I can definitely link you to some great websites, different YouTube videos, or if you have a question about something, just let me know. I'll try my best to answer it. But uh, there's definitely a lot of fun things we can do with watches. So, if you have any questions, like I said, let me know. And thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, liking, leaving a comment, all that good stuff, sharing with your friends. And until next time, have a good one.